What's up, guys? Today on Moto IQ, we're going to make this quiet Corvette behind me sound like this. <laughs> Up to this point, we've done a number of modifications to our 2016 Corvette, but all of them have been suspension, brakes, cooling, aero, that sort of thing. We haven't done anything to affect the power. Today, that's all gonna change. Uh, we're gonna be adding a Blackheart catback exhaust system from Hooker. Uh, you might associate that name with El Caminos and muscle cars of the 60s and 70s, but trust me, they make cool stuff for new cars like this one too. In fact, for our C7 Corvette here, not even the Z06 one, just the Stingray, I counted over nine different products. No, not over. I counted nine different products they offer just for exhaust on this thing. And that doesn't include the headers. They actually make a shorty 50 state legal header and a race header that, had, that gets rid of the cats. And we ordered both of those, but unfortunately they're on back order. So we'll have to wait till our next video until we test all that stuff. Uh, so this is just going to be a test of the uh, catback exhaust. And then we also got an intake from Intech by Holly Performance. We're not expecting a whole lot of power from that, but we got it. So we're going to test it out and see. Before we do anything, though, we're going to get this over to our dyno room and see what kind of power it makes stock. A stock 2016 Stingray makes either 455 or 460 horsepower, depending on whether or not you opt for the MPP exhaust. Our Corvette has that option, which is basically just a valve you can open up to bypass most of the muffler, making it freer flowing, but also louder. And the Blackheart exhaust can be ordered with it too. We really only keep the valve closed if we're starting the car early in the morning or late at night to avoid pissing off the neighbors. Otherwise it's open because it sounds badass. It's nice to retain that functionality nonetheless. On the dyno, our Corvette put down 345 horsepower. That's a miserable figure compared to the 460 it's supposed to make at the crank, but that's the name of the game with a Superflow dyno. We're not going to get too hung up on that though. We're just looking at the delta or change in power before and after our modifications. So that said, let's get the exhaust on and see how it does. The exhaust is constructed of 3 inch 18 gauge 304 stainless steel. This system retains all the factory catalytic converters. Unfortunately, those catalytic converters are part of the more restrictive stock X-pipe. So you gotta chop your stock exhaust right after the catalytic converters and use that with the Blackheart exhaust. It's not too big of a deal. They show you exactly where to cut and we had no problems with it. It has a high flow straight through muffler and utilizes a factory style AFM valve to prevent check engine lights and reduce the unwanted harmonics while in four cylinder mode, which we never are, but it's nice that it's there. And it's got four inch twin wall polished tips that have the hooker logo laser etched onto them. Very similar looking to stock. The install was very straightforward. Cutting the cats off wasn't even the hardest part. We probably spent more time dicking around with the mufflers to make sure that the tips lined up perfectly in the back. Cause that's the part you see. And our patience was rewarded. The exhaust doesn't hang down any lower than the factory exhaust and we didn't have any problems with clearance. All the hardware is included, the instructions are easy to read, and everything utilizes the factory mounting points. After the install was complete, we warmed up the drivetrain again. And the car made 367 horsepower. That's 22 horsepower over stock. We didn't do a lot of research ahead of time to set expectations on what kind of power we should see but we were all surprised we got that much from just a catback exhaust. And those gains were across the entire power band too. No power was given up on the bottom end. Now let's move on to the intake. Holly's Intech filter attaches to the intake tube without the use of clamps, which makes the install really easy. We were a little concerned that it might slip out under use, but we put about a thousand miles on it since the install and it hasn't moved yet. The hardware the intake does use is all high quality stainless steel. The intake to throttle body coupler is a silicone bellow style. So the intake can easily accommodate the use of a nitrous plate or throttle body spacer without having to modify the hard plastic tube. The one piece intake tube eliminates one of the chambers and bellows that the factory intake has to improve airflow and efficiency. 
The intake utilizes all the factory mounting locations and occupies about the same amount of space as the factory intake. It comes with a four layer dry filter with an aluminum mesh over both the inner and outer layers that won't corrode and helps prevent deformation. The filter is made of an oil free media and it's washable. The entire install took less than 10 minutes and we didn't even have to pull the car off the dyno. So let's run it again and see if we made any more power. This time our dyno showed a peak horsepower of 374 horsepower. That's another 7 horsepower over the exhaust. Horsepower was dead even up to about 3500 RPMs. After that the freer flowing intake made more power all the way to redline. So altogether we made 29 horsepower from a cat bag exhaust and intake. We were honestly surprised how much power these made and we are super excited to see how much power the headers are going to make. So stay tuned, hopefully we'll get those soon and we can bring you another test. Like always, if you like this content, please don't forget to subscribe. It helps us a lot. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you soon.